Hey everyone, it's been over two minutes and I haven't been raped yet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hi, I'm Diana Davison, and this week we're mourning the loss of musical genius and poet Leonard Cohen. We're also mourning the rejection of democracy by thousands of Americans across the U.S. of A. I guess they exported so much of it, they didn't have any left. But instead of discussing those sad subjects, I'm going to remind people about the more positive future that Dr. Jordan Peterson, currently a tenured professor at the University of Toronto, is trying to promote. Jordan Peterson stirred up necessary controversy, starting on his YouTube channel, which I'll link below, and continuing in a sustained effort to reverse laws that threaten Canada's legal system and address the dangerous thinking that brought these laws to pass. On November 10th, cartoonist Brett Lamb revived a political cartoon in the Torontoist called Glad Hand to describe how he sees Jordan Peterson's anti-PC or anti-politically correct activism. Some of his claims are surprising, but I will treat them as if they're legitimately arrived at opinions. He goes through six frames, stoke fear, feign moderation, scapegoat, name-calling, hyperbole, and profit. So let's look at these one at a time. Number one, stoke fear. We see in the cartoon here that Jordan Peterson is shaking, saying that he's afraid. The question is whether or not this fear is rational. So from Dr. Peterson's article in the National Post, let's look at why he's afraid. Bill C-16 is dangerous legislation. Those who formulated it and who are pushing it and its sister legislation are dangerous people. I'm not going to use their words. Read the Ontario Human Rights Commission website dealing with such things. Formulate your own opinions. Decide for yourself. Well, you still can. So he's actually telling people to go look it up themselves. And, you know, if you follow his work, you'll get lots of links on where you can go find these things. And he's not saying the world's going to end. He's talking about something very specific. And he's talking about legislation, the wording of an actual law in Canada. That's pretty solid. He's not just generally stoking fear about nothing. So point number one here, stoking fear. Well, that's just a little bit naive, isn't it? On to number two, feign moderation. Well, does Jordan Peterson have a political alignment? From his National Post article, I've been studying authoritarianism on the right and the left for 35 years. I wrote a book, Maps of Meaning, the Architecture of Belief, on the topic, which explores how ideologies hijack language and belief. As a result of my studies, I've come to believe that Marxism is a murderous ideology. I believe its practitioners in modern universities should be ashamed of themselves for continuing to promote such vicious, untenable, and anti-human ideas, and for indoctrinating their students with these beliefs. I am therefore not going to mouth Marxist words. That would make me a puppet of the radical left, and that's not going to happen. Period. So we can see here that Dr. Peterson has studied both the right and the left. He is specifically talking about Marxism, which falls on the left, but he's got similar opinions of ideologies that fall on the extreme right. So he actually doesn't have a political alignment. He is talking about specific ideologies, and he does not belong to any of them, and he refuses to be forced into belonging to any of them. So panel number two, again, just a little bit naive could have been cleared up if he studied his subject. Panel three, scapegoat. So this is referring to Dr. Jordan Peterson's rejection of the many, many pronouns that the trans community is insisting people use, basically on their whim. Whenever somebody says, this is what I want you to call me, be it, you know, Her Majesty or whatever it is that you have to go along with it, lest you be guilty of a crime. But the trans community is specifically mentioned, and so the cartoonist here is saying that these people are being used as a scapegoat by Jordan Peterson. If we look at the National Post article again, we'll see that Jordan Peterson, who is actually a clinical psychologist, is expressing concern for the mental health of children. 
He says, and the fact is that for every person whose feelings are respected and whose identity is somehow validated because of the use of such pronouns, there are going to be 20 already mixed up and unhappy adolescents whose chaos will be multiplied tenfold because of all these new choices. We can see that the reason he's concerned about the trans community specifically is actually a clinical psychologist being concerned about the mental health of children. So we move on to name calling. So the cartoonist here is saying that the main arguments being made is just a bunch of name calling where Jordan Peterson is calling them social justice warriors, etc. Let's look at Jordan Peterson's website where he describes how he came to write his book, one which I'll be talking about again soon. He says, I had no idea where my search would lead me. I came over the course of a decade and a half to understand the meanings of many things that had been entirely hidden from me. Things that I had cast away stupidly as of little worth. I came to realize that ideologies had a narrative structure, that they were stories, in a word, and that the emotional stability of individuals depended upon the integrity of their stories. I came to realize that stories had a religious substructure, or to put it another way, that well-constructed stories had a nature so compelling that they gathered religious behaviors and attitudes around them as a matter of course. I understood, finally, that the world that stories describe is not the objective world, but the world of value, and that it is in this world that we live, first and foremost. So we're not really just dealing with name-calling, are we? We're actually listening to a person who has studied the evolution of ideologies, the nature of ideologies. So he's talking about actual groups which need to be named so that we can address them, and the narrative, the stories that they have built their worldview on. Panel 5. He accuses Dr. Peterson of hyperbole. I know mean, oh, millions of views. It's such an important subject. Right? Well, it is. Let's look at that. Look at the protests and the outrage that resulted from his videos. People committing crimes to keep anyone from criticizing their ideology. Seems to me it is a big deal. Brett himself has revived a dead comic in order to weigh in on the subject. Another professor... Janice Fiamengo is currently being taken before the tribunal on ridiculous charges. And as Peterson points out, the new law on gender expression now makes it a crime to criticize someone's hair or fashion choices. Don't you think that's gone to the point of insanity, Mr. Lamb? The outrage isn't about trans people. This is about the radical attempt to control people's language and thoughts, and it's about the integrity of the legal system. You know, that thing that we give up a lot of freedom in exchange for. The legal system is a central feature in the social contract and the willingness for people to enter into that contract. That's pretty serious stuff. If our own legal system becomes a threat to our liberty and security, well, there's no contract. The final panel, profit. Brett Lamb is criticizing Jordan Peterson for actually trying to raise money, but let's look at why he might be trying to do that. Jordan Peterson will probably lose his job, and he's doing this because of his conscience and his inability to remain silent. He's a distinguished academic willing to say the emperor has no clothes. Jordan Peterson will probably lose his career simply for exercising his freedom of speech. Jordan Peterson has stated he's willing to go to jail to stand up for his beliefs. His family supports Jordan's choice to take this risk. This was the most shocking of all the cartoon panels. Jordan Peterson is willing to give up everything to stop the corruption of society down a path that he knows, because he studied it, he knows will lead to mass killing. I think the least we can do is help Jordan Peterson replace his income. So, Brett Lamb is wrong, but people shouldn't get inflamed over a cartoon. I think the Muhammad cartoons are a good thing to keep in mind here. If you don't think Muslims should get enraged over depictions of their prophet, 
then no one should be inflamed over Brett Lamb's depiction of Jordan Peterson. This is not just a one-frame cartoon capturing a silly moment, though, not even just a singular aspect of his target. This is a six-frame detailed analysis and statement on Dr. Peterson's character. So it's not a simple joke, but I believe it is published honestly. I believe that Brett is expressing a point of view that's shared by others as well, so it should be addressed honestly in return. In the comments of the cartoon, which he left open, which was a good start, Brett says that he's familiar with Jordan Peterson because of the many appearances that Dr. Peterson made on TVO's The Agenda with Steve Pakin. If Brett read Jordan's website, he would probably understand Dr. Peterson a little bit better. It's not just Brett who should learn about Jordan Peterson before judging him or assigning value to what he's saying. People who support Dr. Peterson's work and voice should know who they're supporting as well. He currently, despite Brett's Frame 6, is offering his book Maps of Meaning for free on his website, and you'll find the introductory chapter is extremely personal. He walks the reader through his intellectual journey as a young man, and it's so personal, he even gives detailed descriptions of the nightmares that plagued his youth and the mental experiments he imposed upon himself in his search to understand the human capacity to harm others. Dr. Peterson has a sense of humor. When told by many listeners that his voice sounded like Kermit the Frog, he donned a hat given to him by an Aboriginal tribe into which he'd just been made an honorary member. He wore it in one of his videos. And in fact, an update on his website shows him as Kermit the Frog. So I'm certain that Jordan, Kermit Peterson, supports Brett Lamb's freedom of speech. The main question is whether or not Brett Lamb was expressing an honest point of view or if he was just trying to smear Jordan Peterson's name with lies. That his cartoon is factually inaccurate does not mean that Brett was lying. It just means he didn't research his topic very well. I don't see Mr. Lamb's cartoon as an insult to Mr. Peterson. I see it as an opportunity. Brett Lamb identified a number of misconceptions about Jordan Peterson, and if he hadn't voiced those or drawn them, then Jordan Peterson and those familiar with his work wouldn't have the opportunity now to correct those errors. This is a great example of why freedom of speech is important. But Brett, seriously, you're so obviously wrong about a number of things that I think you should learn to research your target a little bit better in the future.